Hi, my name is Shilin Patel and I'm from Duke University. I'm also a developer for the Internet 2 Grouper project. This is the end users track of the Grouper training. In this video, I'll be talking about the admin UI, and this is part one. Here are the topics that I'll be covering in this part. I'll start off with an introduction, then I'll talk a bit about group and folder structures, which are important to know as you create objects in the UI. I'll give an overview on privileges, then I'll talk about the different browse modes in the admin UI and give a demo of that. The later parts of the admin UI training will cover more detail and demos on all this. So starting off with an introduction, uh, these are the components of Grouper as a version 2.1. Uh, the green circle in the middle is the core Grouper API. The light gray areas are various components of Grouper that allow users to interact with it or allow connections to other systems. The component that's circled in red represents the UIs in Grouper. Uh, but note that there are multiple UIs. Uh, there's the admin UI, which this video is about, uh, but then there's also other special purpose um, and easier to use UIs, which we call the light UIs. Uh, they contain some functionality that's also in the admin UI, but then they also contain some functionality that's not. Before I start talking about the admin UI specifically, I want to cover a couple of other things that are important to know. Uh, first is about group and folder structure. This slide shows a lot of the core grouper concepts. Uh, so first off, in grouper you have a hierarchy of folders, and within folders you can have groups. Subjects can be added as members of groups. Uh, these subjects are often people, but they can be other types of objects as well. Uh, groups themselves are considered subjects, so you can add one group as a member of another group. Uh, doing this will produce indirect memberships. In Grouper, you can also have composite memberships, and there are three different types of them. Uh, the first is union, uh, so you can define a group as being a union of two groups. Uh, this is similar as adding both, of adding both groups as members of another group. The second type is intersection, uh, so you can say that a group is defined as the intersection of two groups. And finally, the third is complement. Uh, so with that, a group's membership is defined as the members of one group minus the members of another. Uh, this is useful if you have exclude lists, for example. So next, I'll talk a bit about an example structure that you may have. Uh, say, for instance, you're a user in the engineering school at your institution, um, and you're given access to a folder within the hierarchy called school colon engineering. Uh, you may have been given access to this because you need to create and maintain groups that would be used by an application, for instance. First off, you may want to create an admin group that would contain all the engineering admins who would perform the same type of tasks as you would. Uh, this group could later be used to assign privileges to other groups uh, that would need to be maintained by all engineering admins. You may also want to create an apps folder and within that, a folder for each application. Uh, and then within each apps uh, folder, you may want to create the groups that, uh, that would be needed. If you're an end user that would just be updating memberships and not creating folders and groups, then you may not be concerned about uh, the structure as much. Now I'll talk a little bit about privileges in Grouper. Uh, this is another topic that I want to uh, quickly describe before getting into the details of the admin UI. Uh, privileges in Grouper are used to determine who has access to objects in Grouper. Both folders and groups have privileges that determine who has access to them. Uh, there are two types of folder privileges. Uh, the first is create groups, uh, the create groups privilege. Um, if a subject in Grouper has this privilege on a uh, folder, then that subject can act, has the ability to create groups in that folder. Uh, the second privilege is the create subfolders uh, privilege. Uh, again, if a subject has this privilege on a folder, then that subject can create subfolders within that folder. Uh, groups also have privileges associated with them and there are six types of uh, privileges for them. Uh, the first is the admin privilege. Uh, if you have that privilege on a group, 
then you have full access to that group, including being able to delete it. The second is the update privilege, uh, which is given to people that need to be able to update the memberships of a group. Uh, the third is the read privilege, which allows you to read the memberships of a group. Uh, then there's the view privilege, which simply allows you to see that the group even exists uh, with basic information about the group uh, without being able to see the memberships. Uh, if a subject is assigned the opt-in privilege, then that subject can join the group on his or her own. Um, and if a subject is assigned the opt-out privilege, then the subject can leave the group on his or her own. Uh, also note that some of these privileges imply some of these other privileges. Uh, for instance, if you have any of the group privileges like opt-in, then you basically have the view privilege too, even if that's not um, specifically assigned to you. Uh, on the example on the previous slide, um, if you were delegated access to school colon engineering, uh, then you were probably given both the create group and the create subfolder privileges on that folder. Now, uh, when you create your own folders in the admin UI, you're automatically given both of these privileges. Uh, when you create a group in the admin UI, you're automatically given the admin privilege to that group. In both cases, you have access to give other people or groups of people access as well. So next I'll talk more specifically about the admin UI. Uh, this part will just cover one topic um, for the admin UI, which is browsing in the admin UI. Uh, the admin UI has multiple browse modes, uh, which are listed on the slide. Uh, the first is My Memberships. Within this view, you're able to see groups that you're a member of. Uh, but note that if you don't have view privilege to the group, then even if you're a member of the group, you won't see the group. Uh, then there's the Join Groups mode. Um, there you will see groups that you're allowed to join because you were given the opt-in privilege. Uh, next is the Manage Groups mode. Um, and there you'll see groups that you're allowed to manage uh, meaning you would have been given either the update or the admin privilege to those groups. Uh, the create groups mode will show folders where you have access to create groups or subfolders. Um, and finally, the explore mode will allow you to browse the entire folder hierarchy. Uh, but again, you won't see groups um, if you're not given the view privilege to those groups. Uh, so now I'll bring up the admin UI and demonstrate this. So this is the uh, start page for the grouper admin UI. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is log in. So I'm going to log in as a, a test user that I created. Uh, the method that you use to log in at your institution will be based off of how your institution has set up authentication. Um, so as soon as I log in, uh, you can see on the left side over here, there are a bunch of navigation links that um, well, some of which are the browse modes that I was just talking about. On the right side, you'll see content based off of um, which link is selected. Um, I'll also mention that here you'll see some uh, information links that you can click on uh, that'll give you some help information. So, um, so if you need the help information, you can just click on that and, and read through it. Uh, so first, I'll click on the My Memberships link. Um, once I click on that, you can see that I was taken down into the, the Duke University um, folder here. Um, and under that folder, there's the Employees folder and the Orgs folder. Um, and seeing these two folders here means that I'm a member of a group that's within um, both of these folders. So if I click on the Employees folder, you can see that there's a staff group. Um, so I'm a member of that group. Um, if I click on the orgs folder, um, first of all you'll see that it took me down one level further into the OIT folder because the orgs folder doesn't have any other folders in it. Um, and I can see that there's an all group and a staff group. And so this would mean that I'm a member of both of those groups as well. Um, over here there's a, uh, a link to list my groups. Um, what that does is essentially switch the modes that instead of displaying um, all these groups in the folder hierarchy, 
it'll just list them all out. And so then here you can see the, the three groups that I'm a member of um, all together in one place, where I can click on this link to show folders and groups, which will switch it back to the way it was. Um, I can click on the, the join groups link, um, which would show me groups that I'm allowed to join because I have the opt-in privilege. Um, there are none in that case right now, so nothing is displayed. Um, I can click on the manage groups link, um, which will show me um, groups that I'm allowed to manage. Uh, so first off, this took me directly into the engineering uh, folder, um, suggesting that the only place that I can manage groups is within the engineering folder. Um, so here, for instance, there's the Etsy folder um, in an admins group that I can manage. Um, I can click on the create groups link, um, which will also just take me to the engineering folder because that's the only place that I can create groups. Um, and again, I can create groups in the Etsy folder, um, or I can create groups in the apps folder, um, or in the apps one folder. And finally, there's the Explorer link over here, which will allow me to navigate through the, um, through the folder hierarchy. So I can click on uh, Duke University here. Um, I can click on Orgs. Um, when I was in the My Memberships view, um, I showed you that there was a staff group and an all group, which showed up there because I was a member of both of those groups. Uh, but the affiliate group didn't show up, because I, didn't show up there because I wasn't a member of it. Uh, but I can see it over here. So that's all for this tutorial. Um, you can click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. And here are some links with more information. Thanks.